I'm pretty tired. There's a still left in there. It's a fish. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm vegan mate. You can drink a liquid. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, would you like to roll the gun dice for the first time oh, as your new character? Absolutely, he will. Let's go. One. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the party, guys! Yeah. <laughs> He's going to run after Torin, twirl him round, and grab his head and just start kissing him. <laughs> Rob, <I don't> kiss. <laughs> 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 you don't have to. Um, <laughs> And that's 20. Yeah! Yeah! Hands on the tree! Oh, hands on the tree! Oh, oh, hands on the tree! Oh, hands on the tree! Don't think this is meditating! Oh, it's not! Oh. Oh. Question for you here. Who here loves D and D? Who here is a complete newbie and has never played it before? Also, a woo, woo. You are just as welcome, yes. if only more so. More so, more so. We are Roll the Damn Dice, an actual play D and D podcast. Uh, a little bit on the chaotic side, or very, very on the chaotic side. Um, so we're here to talk to you about uh, leveling up your D&D game. So just adding that extra little bit of spice that makes things really, really cool. Um, I'm your, your host, your moder- moderator for the evening, um, the very heavily pregnant. She has promised me I will not go into labor. Um, but if I do yell for a doctor, I'm not talking about anybody dressed as Doctor Who unless they have some kind of medical certificate, please. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so we are sponsored, sponsored by the amazing Critic UK, uh, who make all sorts of um, tabletop stuff, amazing dice, beautiful DM screens, loads and loads of cool, cool stuff. But they've just brought out a book called Glorious Taverns, uh, which, my, which my husband here is uh, modelling for you. <laughs> Uh, would you like to big up, big up Glorious Taverns for uh, yeah. us? Um, this brand new book uh, is pretty much just out today. Um, we got a little sneak preview so we could play a one shot from it. It's basically, if you're, uh, hands up if you're a DM. Give us a wave if you're a DM. This is amazing. It's got so about 30 taverns in it. Uh, loads of NPCs, uh, some cool new monsters. All of the taverns have got like a little thing you can do there if you want. Or it's just really helpful to have hundreds of taverns at your disposal. When, you're, you, when your players inevitably go to the wrong town that you have no prep for. So this is an amazing book, and we're going to give one away. We are. We're going to give one away. Uh, so normally we stream on a Sunday night uh, on Twitch and YouTube, uh, and then the podcast comes out the following Friday. Uh, but this Sunday we're here. Um, it was a little bit of a squeeze getting home in time. So there is a very special one-shot that we have played from Glorious Ta- Taverns called The Thirsty Minx. Um, and if you watch that this evening, you can find out how you can win a signed copy of Glorious Taverns just for yourself, which we will uh, we'll sign today at some point. Oh, we're signing it, are we? Yeah, we'll sign I it. I thought someone important was signing it. Oh, yeah, well, you know. But we'll sign it, yeah, sure. And Stephen will. I uh, will. So <laughs> I think it's probably a good idea if uh, we introduce you to our lovely crew. Uh, so I am Joy Amy. I am currently playing a high elf bard called Lopticus Frain. Um, she wears a lot of very, very violent pink and black and does a lot of necrotic damage. Um, she's a bit of a badass. Um, Steven? Oh, hello. Hi, I'm Steven. I'm playing um, Lahan Von Ryder, the half-elf monk who really likes to do the splits. <laughs> um, hi, I'm Connor. I'm the DM. So I play every other bugger in the world that isn't <laughs> sat here currently. Hello, I'm Moa. I'm playing Lily Lixer Amberfaf Mernig. She is a gnome and a druid circle of spores. She's adorable, but she might kill you, not purposefully. <laughs> uh, hi, I'm Paul. I play Lord Torindar, a p- oath of vengeance dragonborn paladin. Uh, and he's, uh, he's, quite frankly, the best player in the game. 
Uh, they wouldn't go anywhere without him or survive without him. <laughs> uh, and I'm Luke. Um, I'm playing Big, the Goliath. Uh, barbarian, except no rage. but just a calm barbarian. We've got a lovely homebrew creation on the go with that one. So, yeah, it's good fun. Lovely. Um, he says he's playing Big. Uh, this is only because somebody bumped into the Fey who asked him uh, if they could have his name, and he just went, yeah, it's... Yeah. So now his name is Big, because uh, yeah. he's had his name taken away by the Fey. He's not going to be rude. He's an innocent soul. He's he is an innocent rude. soul. Yeah. Uh, so, guys, big question. What does leveling up your D&D game mean to you? And how have you, like, leveled up your D&D game in the past couple of years? Uh, Paul. Yeah. yeah, I can go first. Um, I, uh, for me, because I... Uh, we, we have two... Uh, games running at the same time, um, and I DM one of them. And the big deal for me is actually uh, playing in a game with other someone else's DMing. Um, it's just I I've learned so much um, from Connor, who is uh, excellent. Uh, we have totally different strengths, um, and I've learned a lot around explaining the room and and Matt Mercering everything. <laughs> who? 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 Uh, no. uh, what about? Oh. What about Moa? What about me? What about Moa? Um, How have you leveled up your, your D&D? Because you were a newbie when we started, but I that was, was like two years ago now. Yeah, I'm not allowed to say I'm a newbie anymore, which is really annoying because I can't get out of like messing it up. Um, but actually, that's my big thing. I've learned that it's okay to mess up. It's okay to be like leaning it. I would say leaning into the flaws of your character. And if you are a little bit frantic or a little bit forgetful, your character's a little bit frantic and a little bit forgetful. Um, and yeah, finding that hook. I started playing a spellcaster for my first ever character. It's a really good idea. And just learning how to manage those spells has kind of evolved. It started off with a full-on color-coded spreadsheet. Now I got druid cards and a folder, and it's really fun to flick through um, quite dramatically. And yeah, just finding the way that works for you, because it's not going to be the same as someone else. And just allowing that evolution to happen has been a big one. And trusting your DM, because yeah. I wasn't very good at that in the beginning. Um, yeah. Um, I mean, that goes both ways, though. So I think for me, um, the big level up. So I'm actually the newest player at this table. Uh, these guys have been playing for about a year before I came along. Um, so learning to trust the table and learning that this group is very different from my previous groups. Um, the players that I used to play with, one of them's dotted around. I'm trying to see if I can see them somewhere. Um, they never fought anything. Getting them to fight a creature was uh, God's own work, whereas these guys... Lord Torrendale yeah, yeah. runs from nothing! <laughs> like, Lockdicker's friend is a murder hobo. <laughs> it's, it was a challenge, but, you know, it's been a fun challenge. Lovely. Guys? Oh, so for me, my one was taking the step from being good at the rules and the game because all the games I played previously, and I've been playing for a while, um, it was just the rules and the stats, there wasn't heavily anything on role play. So for me, joining a group of very talented performers that are heavy on the role play, I was confident in my rule knowledge and the game sense and the stats and all the other wonderful bits. So having a group that encouraged the role play out of me up to my game for that one as well. Of Because I wasn't alone in doing it, I could bounce off and feed off the energy and the interactions from the rest of you. So that helped a lot for me. Cool, cool. Uh, uh, yeah, Stephen? I, I'm very similar to Luke as well. So when I first started playing, I wanted to understand the rules and I wanted to create the most magical monster I possibly could. They're, they're a warlock and a sorcerer. It's a paladin and a warlock. And um, recently, obviously, changing to um, Lahan, who you saw on the screen, um, just a monk just a straight monk, all I do is hit things, and the hardest thing I have to do now is think of the positions I've landed in and how I'm gonna land the next hit when I'm in the splits, or um, upside down. Um, but that's, and it, it's just brought so much more fun to the game now that I'm not so rules heavy, not so focused on the build, I'm just having a laugh, fluffing about and finding out. 
Ah, flapping about flapping and finding about and finding yes. out. Yes, yes, we're censored today. <laughs> <laughs> that actually segues, segues quite nicely into my next question. Um, you guys will have an opportunity to, to ask your own questions a little bit later on, so get thinking. Um, but I wanted to ask you guys, um, so a lot of people talk about, like, what do you prefer, role play or combat? When really they're, like, the same thing, and they should be the same thing. Um, so how do you add a bit of flair to your combat? Like, particularly if you're playing, say, a class that is not spellbound. So like a fighter, or a barbarian, or a monk, or for a instance? Monk, for ex instance, yeah. Um, so smooth, smooth. <laughs> smooth, thank you, smooth. <laughs> so yeah, very smooth. Um, so yeah, with Lahan, I'm having lots of fun. Um, think So obviously, on the character sheet, um, it just says unarmed strike, which can be anything. It is a headbutt. It is a running charge. It is um, the flurry of blows. Um, I've been using flurry of blows a lot as kicks. So it's like, okay, how have I hoisted my body up and I'm now flying to deliver two hopefully fatal kicks um, in this combat. Um, and then um, backflip, backflip, backflip's just my general movement speed now. That's how he moves. Um, so yeah, the great thing about playing Monk is it strips away um, weapons, it strips away magic for most of the subclasses of it, and you just literally look at that unarmed strike. Okay, how do you style it out? How do you make it narrative? How does it fit with what's going on currently? So kind of describing what you're doing rather yeah. than just uh, rolling. Oh, it, it hits. Oh, God, could you Thinking imagine? about yeah. how you're doing it. it. Yeah. Oh, I hit again. Oh, I hit again. Yeah, you, just, you yeah, couldn't you do just that, could hitting. you? Um, I'm actually going to do it at Lancer myself for this one. Ooh. 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 Cheeky. Uh, I found that um, learning a little bit about the mechanics of the other players uh, and the races and the classes that they're playing, because you can then work out what of your stuff fits in with theirs. So uh, Steve and I used to play um, a couple of characters that um, I had heat metal, he had a massive trident that he could throw at things. So if, if the enemy was not wearing armor, you, he could throw the trident at it, I could cast heat metal and we could take it down. So little things like learning cool spells that the others have got, I've, I found kind of... Although I will say, um, the last time we did it, um, I was trying to get you to go into a flanking position because I was very melee at the time. There was certainly no throwing of the trident. I was like, okay, so I'm going to move around and Jamie's going to get what I'm going to do. And she's like, yes, I'm going to heat metal. No, no, I'm holding the metal. Why are you heating the metal? I'm holding it. <laughs> little hasty, little hasty. Um, anyone else? Yeah, I think mine... Is this working? Yes. Um, mine... More, grab uh, Connor's mic. Yeah. Hi. Um, mine was kind of linked to the... Uh, I don't know what to do because you all have planned something and then there's six of us so it gets to you and they ruined what you were going to do. Um, so it's having like a almost like a backup thing like if in doubt what would your character do? Who would they protect? Who would they heal? Who would they like and also not fearing you don't have to do damage necessarily. You can protect the tr as a druid. Um, I think we were fighting thing that a tree, and she didn't want to attack the tree, so she helped protect the tree. And it didn't help the combat, but it was sort of like it, it helped me in my role playing of combat. So, uh -huh. yeah, sorry about that. Uh. I thought there was a Connor. Oh, yeah. Is there a Connor? There can be a me, which there is, is a, a logistical... Connor. You know. No, no, it's fine. Uh, so I think theming, uh, as a DM, most players, as soon as they're in that initiative order, they're fighting to the death. That's it. You're going to take down the dragon. <laughs> yeah. um, so it's about preempting that. People aren't scared of a stat block. People aren't scared of a mini. It's about, oh, the atmosphere around this thing is quite scary. You might die. Don't go into the room, please. Um, and hopefully, that on its own will allow, when you get to the fight, you to carry on that narrative, you carry on that uh, theme throughout the entire fight. And it just allows players to sort of interact with this thing in a way that isn't just, I hit, I receive a hit. Not that there's anything necessarily wrong with that, but it works for our table. Cool, cool, cool. Boys? 
Uh, I was just going to say, um, I just want to be epic every time I have a go. Um, yeah, I've got to wait for all this lot to get through their thing. I want to do the coolest thing, right? Um, I think last time we had a combat, I, the first, uh, if you play Paladins, they have all these things like thunderous smites, which is kind of pointless. Although, this thing we knew that when it died, it exploded. So I tried to hit it like a, like a cricket ball to explode on another enemy. Sadly, it had way too much health left and it fizzled. But it was almost really cool. Um, and I think uh, the same, uh, if you're DMing, reward cool stuff, even if it's not within the rules and it doesn't work. And Connor said he would have if we were close, it was closer to death, have fudged it, because rule of cool, baby. I think almost nearly cool is like Torin to a T. <laughs> That's like <laughs> on brand. <laughs> you play it so well. Um, I guess my only last little point to add to that, we're lucky in just Connor's a wonderful DM, but working with your DM in terms of if you roll to hit and he describes the misses, no, the orc brings up his shield and blocks, and then he on his one, as the orc blocks, he knocks your sword out the way and goes in with a stab, and you get the back and forth, and it's the same with other characters. If someone's just said they do a front flip in the air to kick the giant in the face, you can come up with something so as he's up in the air, I fire the fireball underneath to hit the giant in the stomach. And using what other players have done on their turn and playing off that, especially as a melee fighter, you can get a really nice um, scenario in your head of this one-to-one -one duel going on, and that helps a lot. Cool, cool. Well, I know that um, one of the problems I have with combat is that I'm constantly panicked that my character's gonna die. Uh, who here is a little bit unhealthily attached to their character? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, <laughs> Stephen puts all of the arms up. Uh, so yeah, so guys, how do we deal uh, with your character getting killed off? Because that is a thing that it can happen at any moment. How, how are you ready for that? I'm not. <laughs> uh, more. You, you, bring it up. <laughs> you bring it up in every session afterwards and hope it becomes part of the plot. Um, yes, yeah, somebody's is, still is a little bit I salty did. about being killed off like three seasons ago. I just yeah. um, no, I'm fine about it now. I would say there's a, there's a term that really helps me is this idea of like hold on tightly, let go lightly. And like while, you've, while you're in the character and you love the character and it's great and you put so much of yourself in, because we do, we like make the best version of ourselves or the bits of ourselves that we wish were a little bit better. And we, we invest so much in them and so we get attached. And I think it's that idea of like, okay, well this is potentially an opportunity to make another really cool character. Try another class or another race and it's like, okay, just like let it go litigious mouse um. <laughs> litigious mouse uh, who here um likes to create characters even if they're not in a game yeah that's that's a good step because it means if your character dies you've got another of your characters that you love that you can you can bring forward um, I know you were saying the other week that you, you feel like you'd be okay with Torin dying now. Yeah, that's new for me, actually. <laughs> and uh, me and Connor were discussing it um, a few weeks ago. Um, w it, Connor did not want us to go into battle. Um, there was uh, some NPCs surrounded by a hundred flying knives and fireballs. Torin was very keen to go and stand in and save the NPCs. And, to and Connor was very concerned that me and him might have a big falling out if Torin died through my own stupidity. Um, but I, I was like, no, I'd be fine. And that's, uh, I, I'm just confessing, guys. It's a big thing for me. Um, but I, I think it means you can play, play more freely, have more fun if you can let that character die. You can start a new one. They can become a ghost. You conveniently told me that after the session, though. <laughs> after When you were safe, the next day, I was like, yeah, if she'd have died then, perfectly fine. Um, but I think death isn't the end of your character. You know, they've been traveling with these guys for a while, or your guys for a while. Um, the interactions that the characters have after the death is sometimes if more interesting than the character you've been playing. Um, I know uh, the season that Paul's running, it directly translates uh, and relates to the um, character that Moa's 
had, had died. And it's just, it's interesting to see the way that the world moves on after the fact and the way that they're remembered. Yeah, we do, we, there are characters that we still, still do mention. Um, it's not like when a character gets killed off on your favorite TV show and no one ever talks about them again. They have a big like funeral for them and no one ever mentions them again. Um, we, try and, we try and bring them up and bring them into the story. So like, um, like Arian, for instance. Oh, that was good. Again, it was one of the ones, um, a, a slight nod back, but I made Arian as a very comfort character. He was very simple and easy to play so I could ease into the role play. Um, and then we, I worked with the DM and said, I would like to play a new character. Let's write him out in a story heavy way. Um, and yeah, like he's now not playing him. He's dead, uh, but he's, he's, now, he's just part of the story. So it's not like he's gone and that's it. Everyone forget him. It's on to the new one. And it's exciting anyway, when you're playing a long campaign to play a new character, it's a bit of a refreshing. It can stop things getting a bit stale. Uh, and you can also spike the DM. Uh, if they kill you off, you just come back with a character sheet that's a bugbear, battle master fighter, polar master, sentinel, all that sort of stuff. <laughs> no, 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 no. And it's something I would actually, I'm um, just pointing on Ari in there, um, and it, it goes into Moa's point of um, hold, um, hold like. Hold on tightly, yeah, let go much. lightly. Um, it's an actor term. So <laughs> Moa wants it to become a catchphrase. If you can go around saying it, it'll make her real happy. So um, to congratulate Connor, um, he um, obviously. Um, Luke Choman has said, no, this character's not working for me currently. I want to do something different. And obviously you had backstory and plot lines thought out for this character, which for a DM, I imagine, would be really frustrating that you've done all this work for this character and then the player's just, no, it's not working for me. Um, I kind of changed the character roughly at the same time. Th me and Luke did not work or confer on this. It was just a timing thing. But because your character was an elf and my character's half-elf, Connor just tied it up. He's like, ah, there's a link between your elfiness as your link, and that's where that material is going to come back in. So, like, yeah, congratulations on that, but also, like... I was just gonna say, please recycle your work, DMs. If you do a month, <laughs> two months' worth of work, and a player kills off their character, please recycle. <laughs> don't, don't, don't kill yourself trying to fix a character. Or Glorious Taverns. You can, there's all sorts in here. Yeah, they've had Glorious enough promotion. Taverns. This plug, is us plug, now. Plug, plug, plug. <laughs> One of my favorite things actually in that book is um, uh, when you start drinking, you know, we meet in taverns a lot. It happens, you go to a tavern, you have a drink. There are consequences for what you drink and in what amount. Uh, so there are rolling tables uh, and uh, yeah, we, ha we have one character lying on the floor mumbling incoherently <laughs> at one point. In a very Shout out to Sahiria. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> shout out there. Um, so, in terms of role play, uh, because not everybody likes to be role play heavy, uh, some people prefer, to, uh, prefer the mechanic side, there is no wrong way to play this other than if you're a bit of a douche. <laughs> I think that's... Uh, no, rule number one, rule don't number be one. a douche. Yeah, rule number one. Run! <laughs> Speedy Gonzalez. Um, yeah, so, what... Does good role play etiquette mean to you? Like, what's what's important about it? Um, and I think I think we can start with Luke. Actually, let's start okay. with Luke. Um, so for me, again, like, I was fine with the rules. I'd never really played a role play heavy game, um, so it was nice in that with like a group you trust and you're comfortable with. Um, it meant that when I'm going to steal Stephen's point. I'm so sorry. Um, when it's a scene that you can tell is targeted towards a certain character, they're going back to their hometown, they're meeting someone from their past to let that player have that moment. Um, it, like I said, again, working with the DM, I could be given not a spoiler heads up, but just a heads up, we're going to be going back to your hometown. So I was like, right, okay, I can prepare, I can come up with some little stories of what my character did in the past. So understanding when it's another player's time, I think, is, is a big one. And again, it just comes from being with a group that you trust, really. Yeah, cool. Uh. Yeah, I, I just echo the same as what Luke said. You know, it, 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 if, if something is very much geared towards somebody, give them the space. But also, like, 
create your own space. So um, is, I'm more than happy in a role play situation, I'll grab another player and say, oh, side quest. Um, because like, you know, there's people dealing with something and it's like, well, I could jump in there as well and add my two cents, but then it's just a bit messy. So let's side quest and see what happens. Fluff about. <laughs> and yeah, for me, I am quite a chatty person and I've created quite a chatty character who likes to talk and monologue a little bit. Um, and sometimes it's just like, no, you don't, you don't need to speak. You don't need to do your monologue. Save it for your podcast, otherwise known as my voice notes to Joy Amy. Um, Remember that time you tried to create a silent character? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I had to go at Stephen because he was talking too much. <laughs> I got told off. Um, <laughs> Connor? Yeah. yeah. I'm just enjoying everyone else's for yeah, a little bit. It's all right. <laughs> if I'm quiet, people start complimenting me. It's really <laughs> nice. <laughs> Makes a change. Um, I think, yeah, uh, just knowing when to. S uh, so obviously we do it for a performative side of things. So like, we are trying to put out a product. There are times when jokes may have been made that shouldn't have been. You know, especially during quite serious plot development points. Um, <laughs> yeah. um, so just, just having that space, knowing when to take the space, and knowing when to just shut up. Like, you know, you're all, you're all a party together, act like it. However, we can't shut up, so that's like, that's for us. We, we really struggle to be quiet. There might be players out there who are actually quite shy or aren't confident with their role play, and it's about sort of encouraging that space and making it open for the people who who aren't confident with that. So if you're one of those people that's like a lot of us, uh, just really chatty and gets really excited and, and talks a lot, you can be the person that can encourage the quieter players to get involved. Um, and that just, it makes for a better game, I think. Yeah, and yeah. also role play isn't doing the accents, putting on silly voices, blah, blah, blah. Like, as soon as you're thinking about an action from the point of view of your character, that's role playing. You, you, you're already taking that first step. It, it doesn't have to be this big scary thing. So if you sat there quietly going, I can't role play, everyone else is doing this amazing, probably terrible Scottish accent, um, you are role playing. You're playing a role playing game, guys. It, just take that step. That's, that's why we have role playing, because it's role playing, you see. It's kind of a rule. If you do a D&D &D podcast, you've got to make a pun on roll and roll. It is just a written rule. <laughs> Uh, yeah, um, I, 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 I guess I'd echo where everyone else is. I think we, like I've said, I just want to do cool epic stuff and make Torin look like the coolest character, right? But actually, you're right, it's about making space for everyone else. Um, Luke is definitely the quietest member of our group, uh, but also the funniest and the best and my favorite. Um, <laughs> you all suck. Um, we all agree. Well, I mean, that's the difference. The thing is, it's like... But we, um, do, we all are aware of that. So every so often, a character go, what do you think? <laughs> and it, it's nice to bring people in. And, and we, want the, we want to be like that as D&D. As &D. There's loads of new people coming along. Let's not be gatekeepers. Let's be open, bring people in, um, help them. Thank you. Yeah, we Does can all be like going mad with like the role play and stuff and like steam sealing, but the second Luke talks, it is just silence. Yeah, and it's the so most profound, Luke. <laughs> interesting, amazing stuff ever. It, it's brilliant. Yeah. I got one last quick word. Um, I'll keep it short. Don't worry. Is session zero is important because you can get uh, boundaries with people. Uh, is it good for role player to get uh, in terms of? Before you continue, what is session zero, Luke, for our newbies? Excellent. So before the campaign starts, get your group together um, and just go through what's um, from the DM. Is this going to be? Are we going to go for I'm going to kill you, come fight me type, or do you just want to relax, calm game? What the theme is? Uh, what the Players expect from the DM, DM from players, but the main one for the role player to cut is just getting boundaries in terms of being open with the group you trust in. I don't like this topic. Could we avoid that? Could that not be done? Um, yeah, like phobias or triggers or anything like that. Again, it just aids the role player to cut, makes people seem more comfortable. You just have a better game. Yeah, definitely. I, I, I would say session zero is really, really important. Um, uh, even from getting to know each other's characters and finding out who's going to rub each other up the wrong way um, and whether that's going to become an issue or whether that'll be a fun part of gameplay. 
Um, I think what we're going to do is actually uh, open it up to the floor. If anyone, if anyone has a question, stick your hand in the air, and our lovely Tony will uh, will come and uh, find you a microphone. There, there we are. You're showing one. <laughs> lovely. Oh, so this 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 champ at the front here. Hello. Oh my God, there's so many of you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So speaking as a DM and to the uh, DMs on the stage. What was your best way to try and freshen up combat for your players? Not by like adding monsters in, but trying to encourage role play and other strategic ways for them to fight in the combat. Okay, so that's uh, for the DMs in particular, uh, the DMs in particular, um, how to like freshen up combat for people uh, without kind of pushing them in directions. Okay, um, so your players follow your lead. Um, and I think you have to encourage what you want to see in the game. So Luke was talking about every creature that they come across that I put to them will interact with them in some way. If you give them um, in, one of, I think one of the things pitfalls we fall into as DMs is we have this really fleshed out idea of what the battle is going to look like, what the room is going to look like, what the world looks like. They don't have that. So until you go, okay, there's a chandelier in this room and a floor that is, you know, rocky, is there some terrain that you can jump on? As soon as you start giving them things to play with, they'll start playing with it and, and just lead it off. I, um, I tend to telegraph certain things before they get in there. So subliminally, they, they have things in the back of their mind going, okay, if it's a Medusa, there's statues all the way up there, you know? Um, so when they get in the room, they see a Medusa, they're like, oh, statue, right, okay. We have to do something about this that isn't just hit it with a sword because we'll die. So <laughs> it's about prepping and then um, just playing what you want to see first. Make your creatures be the, the, the way that you want the players to play. And I would add two things to that. Uh, the one thing I thought you would say is layer actions. Um, so, you know, you're nodding. You know layer actions. So layer actions are taking a monster and then at the top of the round, they do something cool. Uh, you know, they can bring a swarm of bugs. They can make the earth, they can bring an earthquake, whatever you want. Um, and that adds a lot to the richness of those uh, monsters. Um, and the other thing is reward cool stuff. So if someone say, I slide down, uh, Moa did, Moa's character slid down a banister and fired an arrow. She rolled a, a nat 20 on the athletics check. So cool, you can have an auto hit. Don't roll for attack, yep. have an auto hit. That means now Moa's gonna be thinking, what cool thing can I do next time to, you know, to, to, to get an extra thing up on the monster? Yep, and it doesn't Flash. have to be advantage, like plus ones, plus twos, give them out if you want to. Cool, thank you very much, uh, and thank you very much. Uh, there's some over here. Hello. Hello there. Hello. Um, Hello there. For a question for all of you. What's your favorite spell? <gasps> favorite spell? Um, I don't even have to flinch on that one uh, because it's inflict wounds. Um, yeah, I, I have a little familiar uh, who's a little uh, pseudo dragon who lives in my hair, and I use him for inflict wounds. He's bright pink and really cute, uh, but then he'll fly towards people, lick them on the shin, and uh, basically give them crippling pain. <laughs> Makes me very, very happy. Uh, oh, Pass, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. Okay. Come back, come back to me. Come back to me. Crisis, there are so many. Ooh, oh. on. <laughs> Hang on, no, so it's not, it's not necessarily my favorite, but it's the, it's, the thing I really enjoy healing spirit with m my particular character Lily and the way she casts it is it's a little tree frog which is kind of like her spirit animal and it sort of lands on people and like throws out its tongue and like licks you healthy <laughs> and that's like just add, again it's like layering on just like a little bit of a little bit of extra onto it rather than just oh I cast healing spirit and you get a d6 it's yeah, it does that, and if you want more, you've got to like stand there and like get licked. <laughs> Luke, my simple one, but blink for me. I just love the flavour of being like an anime character of like zip, disappear, appear ten foot over there, hit them from the back, and zip again and hit someone else. I just love it for the flavour for me. I, I still don't know. Um, that's fine. I'm a charm person. Oh, I don't mean that. No, um, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Your characters are just drunk in the corner most of the time. Um, I really like the illusion school of magic, so anything like that. Minor illusion is fantastic, especially at lower levels of play. Um, just anything that you can be creative with. Prestidigitation, fantastic cantrip. 
Yeah, we know it. Um, yeah, P prestidigitation. And you can't do most of the things you want to do with prestidigitation players. <laughs> it's a cantrip. <laughs> Roll of call, Paul. Roll of call. <laughs> What's yours? Uh, mine would be, um, I love Fine Steed because it's ludicrously overpowered. And uh, I love Misty Step. Again, similar to Blink. You can just be really epic as you go into battle. Super. Thank you very much. Uh, Tony, grab someone. I'm coming Here around the back and going down the middle. The day. We are going to hang Mighty around at the end, so if you oh, don't yeah. get your question answered, you, you can, can wander over. You can come and find us okay, afterwards. We'll hang around here. from the Joker. Um, uh, sorry, uh, what advice do you have for like playing a character who's like completely different from the way you are in like real life? Uh, characters who are not like you at all? Yeah. Right, okay, so uh, advice for playing characters that are nothing like you. So, Paul, you can't talk about this because Lord Torrendar is you. Well, Stephen can't. Stephen can't because they're all uh, social justice they're warriors all, with a banging bod. Oh, the and, answer and, and, is and we pretty much don't. <laughs> um, actually, uh, uh, oh, rat okay. snake, that's a good shout. Okay, yep. Yeah, so after all the comments of me being the quieter one and the calm one, um, no, it was only supposed to be a one shot, but my advice being, again, if you're very, very comfortable with the group, just dive in. Um, I played this ballistic, hyperactive, grubby little necromancer gnome. Um, and it was just more fun than I thought. Again, I thought, I'm only going to do it for a one shot. So if I hate it, it doesn't matter. We're done at the end of the day. But I was surprised. Like, I just, again, comfortable with the group, just dove in, um, took a leap of faith, and it was so much fun. He's become one of my favorites. Um, but yeah, I mean, Make it easier, ignore the voice, ignore an accent, just concentrate on one aspect. Flesh that out, then bring in a voice. You don't have to do all at once. I'd say pick a good aspect as well. So something about yourself that you wish you were, um, because that is, I mean, it's healthier to focus on anyway. Uh, but also, don't be afraid to copy someone you've seen in a film that you like. Right, so like, I unless you're putting content out like like we are, uh, you could base a character on somebody that you like from fiction, uh, and I find that that's really helpful if you're playing somebody that's a lot different to you. Um, I, uh, in our other campaign, I play a character called Carousa Morn, who is another paladin dragonborn, but completely different. She is the most chilled person in the entire universe because she believes that if it wasn't meant to happen, Paladine would have stopped her by now. Um, so she, she's just so laid back, and I am a stress head, man, a real, real, real stress head. Um, so yeah, I'd say pick something that is like a positive trait that you can focus on. Thank you. Uh, I think we've probably got time for one more. Tony, Tony. I am here. Tony, we haven't done any on this question side. question for oh, yep, Stitch. Yep. <laughs> Hi, uh, my question is, where characters that you haven't played in a while and you don't find particularly interesting, how do you breathe new life into them? How do you breathe life into characters you've been playing for a while? Uh, no, oh. uh, if you like, have a character, you're not particularly, you can't really find, uh, getting to their character, how do you make them interesting? Like, how do you... Right, okay, yes, gotcha. Steven. So, um, <laughs> I... Again, sometimes I think too much about the build and the physicalities and what I want them to be. Um, is, are they a fighter? Is it a weapon? Um, are they a magic user? But when I come to doing the personality thing, um, I have a rough idea, but to flesh it out, I literally use the stats. So if I think of Lahan, he is very wise because he's a monk, so you know all the pluses into wisdom. Um, he has a medium intelligence, um, and then he's got no charisma. So for me, he's just, oh, there he is, look. Him with the tattoos. I don't know where I got the visuals from. Um, but yeah, it, it, so for me, with those stats, it is telling me he's not good with people, um, but his brain is always thinking, and there'll be situations where like, maybe something's quite sensitive or people are upset, but he'll be like, oh, no, that's really cool, though, because what's happened there is he'll, he'll think about like, the, the, the mechanics behind the situation and not realize that his lack of charisma and empathy and people skills makes him quite unlikable, um, which is really fun to play. But also, if you're, if you're getting a bit bored or you're struggling to really key into it, change them. Like it's yeah. like it takes it takes me about six months to really get into a character, 
Um, and I, I had one character, I was like, I, I'm not enjoying this. It's, I was, I'd gone from playing a spellcaster to a fighter. I was like, I'm not, I'm not enjoying it as much. So multi-class, maybe like throw in a little bit of rogue or a little bit of spellcaster. Um, or just talk to your DM and ask about things that could affect them that might sort of make them... Multi-classing. Well, yeah. The multi-class. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, we are sort of running out of time, which is a real shame. So if you, didn't, if you still want to ask a question, we will be hanging out around there. So do come and chat to us. Uh, our character art, which was up there, <laughs> I was going to talk about, uh, is by hollyhammer underscore art. Uh, who you can find on Twitter and on Instagram. She is brilliant. So good. Um, if you're looking for commissions, definitely go and find her. So if you're looking to win Glorious Taverns, uh, you can tune in to YouTube at 6 o'clock this evening, uh, find Roll the Damn Dice, uh, or you can watch after the fact as well, um, because you know most of you will still be traveling home at 6 o'clock. I know we will. When are we closing uh, the entries for the book? Uh, when are we closing the entries for the book? 5th of June. The 5th, 5th of June. June. So and then the winner will be announced on the 12th of June. Yes, so you need to put the answer like in the YouTube comments. See ya. And subscribe. That would be lovely. Thank you. You guys have been so lush. It's been so, uh, so thank you so whatever much. Whatever you do this week, go out there and roll, roll the dice. Roll the damn dice. dice. Unison. Yeah. <laughs> so unison.